Greetings, St. Paul Public Schools community. I'm happy to spend some time with you this afternoon, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Let me please first acknowledge the beginning of Ramadan and all who practice this observance as part of their faith, Ramadan Mubarak. I also want to let you know that a few times this week, uh, COVID-19 takes on an even greater meaning for me. My office mate, otherwise known as my wife, Mary, works for the Minnesota Department of Health. Her duties have changed in response to COVID-19 as a community health educator, and she's on the phone right now as a member of the state COVID-19 hotline. Uh, so you might hear some dueling voices uh, throughout this meeting. Our conversations have been incredible about our work, and we feel incredibly fortunate to have our health, um, our jobs, and a school district like SPPS for our son. By now, you have likely heard that Governor Tim Walz directed today to extend distance learning through the end of the school year. For many, this is not a surprise. It is a hard reality we are facing, but it is necessary. Governor Walls has been a consistent leader in approaching the fight against COVID-19 in a scientific and pragmatic way. His background as an educator and as a current SPPS parent, I know this has been an agonizing decision for him to initially make and with the announced extension today. To our class of 2020 students, families, and staff who enjoy the time-honored commencement traditions, I am sorry. We will develop a way to honor our seniors. We will do the best we can to provide them a very special celebration. I also want to mention the other transitions we are missing. The changes in individual children and young adults in a given year are incredible, and each one of you is such an important part of it. Whether students are moving on to high school or leaving pre-K ready for kindergarten, becoming an eighth grader at one of our middle schools, or an adult transition from Focus Beyond, independent and gainfully employed. Our school communities are built on relationships and all of us miss these face-to-face -face daily interactions. Screens just don't do it. They keep us on our toes, they keep us engaged in our work, and they keep us inspired to support our students. You might have seen by now the hashtag SPPS in it together. Yes, I know it's a long hashtag, but it really is important. On Sunday, March 15th, this hashtag was created from thin air. I feel incredibly fortunate for the technology commitment we made in the past as a district that gave us a really great place to start from. The governor's executive order 2002 stated we had to create a distance learning plan, we had to distribute meals and provide childcare for St. Paul's essential workers. I can say with a great deal of confidence that no other district in the state of Minnesota and even our surrounding states has implemented this plan like you. I am so proud of your great work and efforts, leading with your hearts and leading what an education system can do when facing incredible challenges. And I mean that, St. Paul Public Schools community. I really believe in the incredible work that you're doing. Thank you so much teachers and staff who have reached out to me personally. I've appreciated our exchanges, phone calls, and encouragement. Not one to shy away from really hard and complex things. You continue to inspire me and push me, and for that, I thank you. I'd like to provide just some brief overview of where we are at. I'm not going to mention everyone, and I hope as we continue to connect, I can share even more stories. I want to thank Ji Meng science teacher, Dr. Bonnie Lobbs, for sharing with me how she created a hands-on learning activity about density where students had to build an object and use it in a sink to float. Owl science teacher, Dr. Megan Hall, who gave our team a deep dive into how Schoology is being used to organize learning material. A critical observation is that her students who may be shy or even withdrawn in class are signing on early and completing all of their work. And also that many ways that students are completing assignments. Frost Lake special education teacher, Martin Odima, a creative educator and using technology, Mr. Odima and his team have carefully displayed content in Schoology using colors, large letters, and voice-activated links to ensure students can access learning. Mr. Odima also schedules 15 to 30-minute calls with students on his caseload to ensure they are accessing assignments and prepared for success. Jackson Elementary EL teacher, Elodie Sangra, shares that it takes more time to co-plan as an EL teacher and with her co-teaching partners. She demonstrated a book with her voice as the audio guide, teaching personifications as one strategy used. She noted collaboration is key during this time more than ever. Our director of transportation, Tom Burr, and the entire department, including our drivers, SPPS buses have been rerouted and loaded with essential supplies, including food and technology, to ensure our students can be successful in distance learning. 
Director of Nutrition Services, Stacey Copen, and her entire nutrition team, uh, TAs, and many others uh, who have helped to uh, assemble, package, and distribute more than 860,000 meals as of today. That's today's drum roll number, you all. 860,000 meals, near a million, throughout this entire city. Uh, that is absolutely incredible, and all of us should feel incredibly proud of that. Our Executive Director of Technology Services, Adris Davis, and his entire team, devices, connection, and support. If you think of the many ways that those three phrases are uh, helping us to do this work at this time, uh, we have learned so much about uh, what we can offer. We have sir, learned so much about our capacity. And the great thing about St. Paul Public Schools, people are always looking to stretch that capacity, and I'm incredibly grateful. Our paraprofessionals, I told you that I wanted to ensure your role in distance learning. We need our TAs and ESPs, and we will continue to work in shaping your role as we learn distance learning. Because again, we're learning every day how to better meet the needs of students, how to support one another. And, and how to do this great work. I told you from day one that there's a role for everyone in distance learning. It has been my goal and my 100% commitment to keep everybody working in St. Paul Public Schools during these sometimes uncertain times. Our student support services, um, just because we're not face-to-face -face doesn't mean they aren't important. I continue to get alerts about uh, safety threats throughout the district, and that could be an alarm going off on a weekend, but it cost, could also be a student in distress. Um, I know that we have teams that are going out and meeting with students. I know that we are connecting uh, through the telephone to make sure that our student needs are not going unmet. I know that we are patching in our community resources as we can as well to make sure that our students and their families have the support that they need. <clears throat> I received an email from a mother last week. She was awaiting food delivery at LNFI, uh, French Immersion School, and unfortunately they were out of food. As I read the email, my heart sank. A bit later in her email, there was, she noted that there was a knock at her door and Principal Luli Flores Hansen was there making a personal food delivery. Um, if you could have seen the smile on my face and reading that, um, it just radiated with what I know is happening all throughout our district. People are going above and beyond because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for our students and for our community and the fact that we get to do it together and watch each other um, in these really tough times, it's inspiring and it helps all of us move forward on a day-to-day -day basis. Our Director of Community, Sur Community Education, excuse me, Tony Walker and his team, Supervisor of Student Health and Wellness, Mary Langworthy, and her team, our amazing custodial staff, and our essential kid care staff. Uh, I'm so proud of you for all of your efforts for St. Paul's essential workers. They're able to rely on you to care for their children in a safe and clean environment so they can provide frontline support to our entire community. And we are serving consistently around 120 uh, young people every day in three sites at Horace Mann, LNFI, and the Rondo Complex. Our HR and finance teams, again, a, a very systems-driven uh, key and essential support of our district are now remote. Uh, and what they've had to do in reconfiguring how they get their work done at a time that is perhaps the most busy, although they would say that's every month. Uh, but I think right now with everything happening from budget to staffing, to certainly uncertain times and to do that remotely, um, heroic efforts on, on the part of the leaders in human resources and in, in finance budget, uh, Kenyatta McCarty, Marie Shrule, and, and so many others in your departments, thank you so much. Um, our clerks who have had to relocate and do their work remotely, uh, the people who are the greeters at our doors um, every day uh, are now in a different environment, but they are still there uh, with their warm personalities, making sure that they do whatever it takes to get the help that's needed. So what about our welcome center and welcoming new students? That hasn't stopped. 51 new students, and that was at, of two days ago. 51 new students as of two days ago have registered in St. Paul Public Schools since March 18th. And we are onboarding and uh, transitioning those students into their school sites uh, with starter kits uh, that they get as part of their, their iPad and, and other resources that are necessary. Uh, certainly our communications team they're responsible for this kind of interaction today. Uh, the team has been uh, incredible, small but mighty, uh, making sure that they get timely information out. It's accurate. It's translated into as many languages as possible. And those translations are, are meant to be quick uh, so that it can be delivered in English and the corresponding other uh, languages that are so important to our community as quickly as possible. Uh, again, I thank you so much. Our family engagement and partnerships, uh, incredibly key. 
uh, at this time. I mean, how about this? 3M giving us $500,000 uh, typically in a year notified us that no, we'd like to give 800,000. Um, our partnership and grants team are so essential in continuing those relationships. And at times like this, we need our community. So I thank you, uh, members of those departments for your great work. I'd also like to, to recognize the superintendent leadership team. Um, approaching our work as service to students, staff, and the community, I really appreciate this team and I've learned so much about the work they do and their approach to supporting others in that work. Our job is to support teams to do their work to support all of us. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for, for the superintendent leadership team. And finally, our Board of Education, you continue to give thoughtful direction, uh, but what I love most is you give endless encouragement. And I need that because it helps me in working with others as well. Um, I couldn't do this um, without the support of our board and the encouragement uh, that they provide me and provide all of us. So Board of Education, Board Directors, thank you so much. Now you've submitted a bunch of questions. In fact, you submitted so many that there is no way I'm going to get through all those today. So there are two ways uh, that we'll do this. I'll continue to give updates like this every 10 days or so, uh, where I can get through some of the questions that are, that are relevant. We'll put some of them online as well so that we can make sure that we're getting responses back to you. So I'm gonna click over to my question screen now and just jump right into it. So with the governor's order today, what about this summer and what about school next year? Um, you know, I was happy to watch a governor's press conference today, um, and he took a lot of words out of my mouth in terms of how I was going to approach it as well. It's really wait and see. Um, and you could see optimism in Governor Walls, but you could also see care and concern, um, meaning that we're going to get it right in Minnesota, to repeat his words. We are. So there's a lot of variables uh, that are going to impact that. What I can tell you and my team will tell you is that we have to think ahead. So in my mind, we have to think about it now. How do we finish the school year in distance learning? That was determined today, stake in the ground, so to speak. How do we then transition into summer? And what will summer look like? And there's a lot of unknown about that, but you are not going to get anything less than, than my full commitment to find a way to do it that's right uh, with our staff and with our students uh, for St. Paul Public Schools. And then what about the fall? I think fall, we have to look at a number of different ways. One, uh, we are back face-to-face -face in school. Okay, that's, that's one possibility that's way up there if you saw the governor's diagram today, that's to the far right on the dial of the progression of, of how we get back into uh, the, our normal way of life. We could also look at a hybrid model. And I guess the uh, one thing that came to mind as I was thinking about expressing or explaining a hybrid model would be more like a college schedule. Um, and what does that mean? Well, it means that we don't all have to be in the same place at the same time doing the same things. Um, and there's a lot of things to work out with this. These are very general, broad ideas. I do not have plans and details and things that I'm gonna throw on people. These are ideas to get conversations started so we can find a way to do the very best job that we can based on the guidelines from the Department of Education, certainly the governor and the Minnesota Department of Health, uh, critically important. And then the other environment would be just like we are now um, in a full distance learning, uh, you know, being online. And yes, there are a ton of logistics to work out with that. Um, you know, we're in this place right now and things are rather stable if there is such a term, but in terms of uh, transitioning in and out, um, equipment, grade level changes, uh, new staff coming in, you know, this is about as stable as we'll be right now. So um, understanding that I don't think any of us can really, um, can, can really articulate what the transitions will be like to start a school year like this, but you know what, we will do this together and, and we'll come through. Um, so I'll talk more about summer in a little bit. It came up in some of the other questions as well. There were a number of questions uh, from SPFE members about memorandum, memoranda of understanding. So I wanted to, to share this with you a little bit. Um, again, we have guidelines from the Minnesota Department of Education, and we've been getting those since around March 15th while they came with Executive Order 2002. Um, this was definitely a, um, this is, um, kind of that analogy of flying, building the plane while it's in flight. Well, we're doing that. And not only are we flying it while it's being built, uh, but we have a lot of different blueprints uh, that are giving us direction and how to do the work as well. And this is blaming no one. Um, this, is the, this is where we're at right now. And these are the, the realities, the present realities uh, that we have to deal with. And what I can say is that uh, regarding MOUs and making sure that that language is something uh, that we can sign off on and agree to, 
what's really important to me is if I sign it or if I agree to it, I have to be able to deliver it. So we do have one of the MOUs uh, that has our signature and is ready. And I, I wasn't able to get a status before this call. I apologize for that. I'm hoping that that is in place. I have a meeting tomorrow. I know there's a membership meeting on Monday, and, and I really hope that uh, you all can report uh, progress that was made on that MOU. It is not out of my lack of desire uh, for you to understand what's expected of you and how we can supervise and support that. Um, it's I want to make sure if I agree to it, I can deliver on it. The last thing I want to do is say, yep, I'm good. Uh, the next thing you know, I have 50 people saying, well, this isn't, you're not doing what you said you would do. Um, so we just have to work out some of those details. We have to have, make sure that we have understanding. And um, this is on on me. I am not, this is not on HR. This is not an SPFE. I want to get this done and we'll find the time uh, to do that. So thank you for, for your patience. I know some of the concerns were about working conditions, uh, especially related to essential kid care. We got some of those things worked out in that memorandum. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I've been very pleased with the protocols that those sites have in place our community. Um, hopefully you haven't all seen it because they really are clean and, and controlled environments and it's phenomenal what our staff have been able to do and accomplish. I thank you for that extra work as well. I'm going to keep uh, moving a little bit here as I scroll down. You know, some of the questions uh, sticking with some of the SPFE related questions are around feedback that, I, that I'm getting and you know, how are, how are we making decisions? Um, you know, so, so again, uh, feedback comes a number of different ways. We are studying and reviewing what we're doing. We're giving questionnaires. We are evaluating um, distance learning as well so we can find out, we can research ourselves uh, to find out how we can do this better in the medium and long-term uh, should we need it. Uh, but I'll also say that I agree. I'm, I'm missing some key voices that not only are going to help me, but I enjoy. Uh, so I am going to look at convening a teacher distance learning um, advisory team um, for, and that we can meet regularly just so I can hear not just how it's going, you can share with me practices um, as well so I can you know, be a more effective leader and understand what is it that I need to advocate for, what's working for our students, what's working for our staff, um, what are some, um, what's some feedback that can help me understand and, and make decisions that are going to help all of us. So I'll be giving out uh, more information about that too. Uh, but I can also tell you, and many of you know this in, in you know, on staff, um, you can reach out to me anytime and I always enjoy our conversations. I, I know many of you are surprised when you get a late night call and it's, it's me calling you back. I really enjoy our time together and, and learning from you as well. Uh, so I'd appreciate those opportunities. Uh, moving into grading, um, how is SPPS working with SPFE to ensure educator voice in quarter four grading procedures? Have you gotten input from SPFE about how grading should be handled? At this time, SPPS sites will follow the existing secondary grading calendar for quarter four. Uh, you can find that. Again, it's in the, uh, the calendar and it's on the, on the website. Uh, and also please note that there may be some final grading requirements that are subject to change. Uh, so we want to wait and make sure that we got that, you know, that final uh, declaration. Um, I have right now another executive order from the governor. I haven't looked at it uh, that closely because I had to come on this call. So I don't know if it got into some of these details, but again, I'm getting daily, not daily anymore, but, but several updates a week from the Department of Education based on some of these really detailed and important questions I might add. Um, once we know more about the requirements the remainder of the year from MDME, M MDE, we will make adjustments and we will include, include SPFE. Uh, in making sure that we can all agree on that. Another question on grading report cards, will we be using the same report cards or what are plans for how to do progress reports? At this time, we are planning to use the marks from the spring report card for the end of year report card for students. Teachers would have the option to add comments about distance learning. Families will receive an electronic copy of the end of year report. Connecting iPads. Um, well, how are we going to collect iPads and other materials? Um, yeah, we've got to work on that right now. Um, uh, we've got to get it now that we know our date, we're going to be, um, you know, distanced throughout the, the school year. We've got to figure out a way so that both staff and students can retrieve their items uh, that may still be in buildings um, and do it in the best way possible. As it relates to iPads, here's what I want you to know about iPads. All of our students, almost all, we're working on getting all of our students, including some most of our pre-K students and early childhood students as well. Um, I want them to keep their iPads this summer. 
Um, it's very important to me personally that we remain connected with our families. And that's without knowing what summer or next year will be. But in this time where critical communication is important, I wanna make sure that every one of our families in a regular and routine way can be in contact with us. That does not mean the expectation is for, for teachers and staff to remain connected all summer, but when students have the device, we can, uh, the district can have regular ongoing updates uh, flashed to them through iPads and through devices as well. Um, so that'll help and it will also help if we do um, end up registering for some summer programming uh, that could be online as well. Uh, so seniors will need to collect, of course, uh, but all of our other students who will be returning, uh, they are going to hold on to their iPads. Uh, what is the district doing for technology? Um, how are we pursuing equitable internet access? Uh, we're utilizing lots of resources for that. All of our students, K through 12, who lack a learning device, staff are connecting with students who aren't engaging via the phone or email, and then notifying tech support teams to have an iPad issued and delivered door to door. Students needing internet or support, Comcast has offered a reduced rate of essentials, internet essentials for $10 a month. Comcast has opened up all their citywide access points for free internet. And SPPS is deploying hotspots to families still in need of internet access. We did put a priority on our students uh, to make sure that the hotspots were delivered. We have ordered more and we'll be receiving more. Uh, we would like to also be able to get hotspots out to staff who have requested them as well. Uh, so to look for some of the community access spots, uh, that are open, continue to reach out to us if uh, internet access is an issue and we wanna find a way to support everyone. Uh, we also maintain a comprehensive family support line as a one-stop location for iPad assistance. You can find that icon um, all over our website uh, with a lot of different resources for families as well. Um, licensed staff, non-licensed staff members as well, uh, working on the PD, making sure that we can also uh, provide access to our apps to make sure that we can support our students all the ways that we know how to. I appreciate your patience on that. I'm going to make this a priority. Um, you know, I want to make sure that that all of you uh, have the ability to do the great work that I that I know you're capable of, but I have to give you the tools to do it. Uh, so I will be discussing this directly with our team and providing access to our uh, paraprofessionals. Um, attendance, I'm glad I was able to get to this one today. The question, what are the consequences for students who are being marked absent during this time, especially those, do, those that do not have technology sorted or if their families are in crisis? Um, I want to be very clear here. My team could probably repeat this. Uh, compulsory attendance laws were not written for distance learning at this time with what's going on in our community. Our students are where they are supposed to be. They're following a stay-at-home order. That is attendance. Attendance to me and the way we need to work through distance learning is how do we connect? How do we ensure access? How are we engaging and how are we supporting our students? And that could be around their math assignment or their physical education video they have to do like my son did one late last night, um, or it could be meal support that they need, or it could be the student support crisis that I spoke of earlier. Um, to me, that's what attendance is. Attendance is how do we interact with, reach, and support and make sure that that regular interaction can take place. Um, so it is far more than a, a prompt being done and us marking that as a student being present. Uh, therefore, I will not take any consequences against a student at all. The only consequences I feel that I'm responsible for is if we are not able to connect with a student, only if we've exhausted every effort to track that student and that family down, uh, will I be able to say um, to, to move on. Uh, but that is our, that is my commitment. I want 100% of our students and families being connected, accessing, engaging, and supporting. I'm down here. Is there a plan to evaluate? I did mention that, yes, we are evaluating. In fact, I did my uh, research questionnaire yesterday and was challenged, by the way, um, in thinking about this as a district leader and, and what distance learning means. Uh, what is the district doing to monitor student engagement and success with distance learning? You know, there are a lot of different connection points we can make. Uh, we can look at how often a student is logging in, how long they're staying on, uh, things of that nature. Uh, we have not gotten um, that far into that yet. We wanted to obviously give some time to stabilize, if you will, our system, work out some of the technology uh, kinks. But as we're now going to be in distance learning till the end of the school year, definitely want to, to look at that as a tool. Um, I talked about how am I getting feedback. 
uh, from teachers around this, you know, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm one individual who leads an entire organization around important decisions. I, I need input and um, I shouldn't have to wait for you. I should be looking for ways to engage uh, with you as well. And, and you have my word that I will work to do that in a more uh, transparent and, and open way as we move forward. Uh, Crossroads year round, we're gonna be bringing some information from Assistant Superintendent Collins who supervises Crossroads around their year round schedule. Um, you know, I they took a spring break. So um, their days, their instructional days are, are a little bit different, quite a bit different uh, from our other schools. And, and I wanna be able to provide uh, them as much flexibility as possible and make sure we're doing it within MDE guidelines and doing it within the purview of the Board of Education if we do have to have a schedule change, calendar change. ELL yeah, students, uh, especially, you know, our, our, our students who rely on uh, English language services, special education uh, supports, um, you know, here's where the real challenge is, and there's no doubt about this. Um, there are, in some cases, I think it's working great. Um, you know, the technology, uh, the support, uh, the environment for um, a number of reasons is really working well. But we can't just have one approach to distance learning and say, this is the way we do it. We really have to get to the individual level. That's for all students, but I think it's especially true for our students uh, receiving specialized services or related services and students who, who come from a variety of different language backgrounds and who have many different reading, writing, listening, and speaking uh, variants to, to the way they approach their, their schoolwork. Uh, so we need to continue to, to get better at that. Uh, we need to continue to find different ways to support. Uh, again, you heard me give one example from uh, Ms. Sangrath today um, and to see her face light up when her students interacted with her in Schoology. Um, I know this is possible um, because it's happening and I've seen evidence of it and I'm just so proud of, of all of you for, for your commitment. I will say, please reach out to leadership in specialized services and in English language. Um, you know, I have a morning call with all of our departments, and what, we're, what I'm discussing right now has been very common. It's come up, um, talking about ways that we can do this better. Um, we, we definitely have a commitment from leadership in the district to make sure we're supporting you, and most importantly, making sure that we're meeting individual needs of students where they're at and supporting them. Talked about summer a little bit. Uh, again, I think if we are online for, for summer, um, it gives us a unique opportunity. I know many of you, ESY, uh, yes, that's a, that's a legal uh, right for education. So we will, we will be providing that. I know many of you have signed up to teach or to be an administrator in summer school. Uh, so we have some things to work out before we can give a final definition of what that uh, could look like uh, with, with some options as well. Um, I'll get to two more here and then I'll commit to giving you some answers on the others. Um, one was on building access. Um, I can't tell you right now how uh, we will transition back into to gaining building access out, uh, otherwise than how we're doing it right now. Um, clearly, as we get down uh, towards the end of our school year or the needs arise that you absolutely need to get into your buildings, we're going to have to set up um, a system where we can do that on a more regular basis. And of course, following the social distancing and uh, Department of Health guidelines uh, in doing so. Uh, so give me some time to work with our team um, especially as we get towards the end of the year, or especially as there are really important uh, paper, hard copy documents and files and things of that nature that you need. Uh, we'll have to brainstorm and find a way to do that uh, in a consistent way that's safe. Uh, you know, that's my commitment. Uh, so I'm going to end it there. It's amazing how quickly uh, this time goes. Um, I got through a lot of questions, but not all. Um, and what I want you to know more than anything today, and I shared this at a, a committee of the board meeting a couple of weeks ago, I gave the, the press three chances, three cracks at, at me writing their headline for them. SPPS superintendent extremely proud of the way that their district, the way that the district is implementing distance learning. You make me incredibly proud. Um, you know, backs are against a wall in many cases and people aren't giving up. Uh, they're digging in. Uh, you're leading with your hearts. Um, you are here because you believe in our children. You believe in this community and it shows. Um, once again, let me repeat, no other district in the state of Minnesota, surrounding states, is achieving distance learning like you are, uh, and I'm thankful uh, to be your leader and look forward to connecting with you real soon. So thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon, and uh, we'll see you soon.